it is Tarvos time. Be sure to like, subscribe, keep watching till the end because there's some very funny bits here and there. And I will see you all into the video. Let's go. Hello, hello once again. What it do, y'all? We are back at it again. I'm not going to keep up your time anymore. I realize I'm... I talk way too much during these opening spiels, so let's just get right on into it. Last time we dealt with the lawyer in training, and now we go over to the other side with, oh boy, Tarvos, the the bull with the horns himself. Volume 8, Route 1, Glimmering Gold and Cold Iron. You're enjoying a brisk, head-clearing walk in the alternative moonlight when the plot comes screaming towards you. Literally, you don't even have time for introspection. Uh, uh, oh, there, <laughs> there he goes! Ah, uh, shit, bro, you good? You turn your head to see a guy in a wheelchair whizzling down a nearby hill. He's got a phone in one hand, making it difficult for him to control his system with the other. Didn't anyone tell you not to fucking be distracted while driving, you dipshit? Uh... You go quickly rush over in time to see him hit a rock and go flying through the air with an impressive arc. Ugh. You bring the fallen wheelchair over to him. He stares at you for a second, then he pulls himself back into it with a grunt. Thank you, weird and ugly alien stranger. Once he settled into the chair, you look over the boy you just helped. He's lanky and scrawny except for his oversized horns, giving the impression of a boy going through a very awkward puberty. His wheelchair is simple and flimsy, and it looks like it's gone through a lot of wear and tear. Oh, intro in introductorily speaking, I should say that my name is Tarvos. Tarvos? Now that's an unusual. Now that's usual. And as it is now unusual. Unusual. Yeah. Holy shit! I can't speak. As is now usual for you. The name sounds familiar, even though you're not sure any of your other friends mentioned him by name. You give him a proper greeting and then ask what happened. And he nods towards an old watchtower at the top of the hill. I was attempting to scale toward the tower. To acquire a rare Fight Spawn Go monster is named Wolverpine. Are you playing? There's Pokemon Go! Oh my goodness. It's ranked Aether Mythic Triple Rare Class, which is one of the rarest of all, at least concerning monsters that can be found in lower blood neighborhoods. But it appears to be tragically out of my reach, so no matter how much I believe my ability to pursue it. You don't know what a Fight Spawn is, but maybe you could help? You've wrangled a few monsters in your time. What? You know, you could help push him up the hill. Maybe fight some gigantic, horrifying beasts. The huge. Wow, I normally am expected to do everything myself, always. The only trolls who offer me help are those who live too far away to actually do anything of consequence. He says with a side eye. Which is fine. I, I get it, but it's pretty useless to me. Anyway, no. What? I don't want your help. On account on, of if it takes it, bleh, on account of if I take it, I will be awakening myself and failing to grow as a troll. I will just have to try again and maybe get grievously hurt in the process, probably. Don't worry, he said. <laughs> don't worry, I'll get grievously harmed, but that's okay. Tarvos begins to wheel back toward the hill. You know how this story goes. You'll have to spend your entire evening convincing this poor troll boy that it's okay to accept help from others. You launch to a gentle pitch about how help from a friend can... Oh, uh, well, if you say so, then I accept your help, smile. Oh, huh, that was easy. You follow Tarvos up the... Oh, you tar do Tarvo follow... <laughs> You follow Tarvos up the hill, where he reaches the steepest part and the wheels begin to lose traction. You step in behind him to give him a little push he needs. The two of you are successful in scaling the hill, and Tarvos grinds and taps at his phone. Oh, it's a phone game. No real monsters involved? Holy shit, this is new to you. Yes, Wolfenpine's not acquired. Thank you so greatly. Maybe the cartoons for Wigglers were right all along. And friendship is truly the greatest source of power to exist, as we all know. Friendship is witchcraft, but it is also magic. Finally, someone who gets you if you ask if he wants a quick ride home and he tilts his head in confusion. I already have a ride. Always. I'm sitting in it. Not like that. You tell him it's hard to explain. Just trust you on this one. Okay, let's go. And with that, you grip this chair and focus your energy and zap on over to his hive. Whoa! Not you magic? Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Do you know any fairies? No. Shucks. Tarvos glances around the room at your follow suit, your eyes settle upon advertising for the theatrical run of Poopa Pan. 
Pinch of the Special Stardust is all it takes to fly. Brought to you by her Imperious Condensation 19th favorite theater company. Reserve seatings for the blue for the high bloods. Hecklers will be called. The rest of the room is rather plain and sparsely decorated. The floor is scattered with messy gaming supplies. So, uh, this is my hive. What do you think? <laughs> Would you characterize this pad as sufficiently cool? You glance at a framed picture of a fake trickster in booty shorts. Sure. Yeah, this pad's cool as hell. Excellent! I hoped you would. Your approval is most good to have. I thought you might be uninterested on account of me being boring and kind of sad. Aw, boring and sad kids are your favorite, you tell Tarvos. What, what, uh, what, what, hey, yo, pause. <laughs> Wait a minute, that sounds terrible. Forget that, ignore that. You mean you relish opportunity to make people less sad. Oh, don't worry then, because I'm definitely sorrowful enough to satisfy. Don't worry, my life is constant pain. I'm also not great at talking either, so we'll have at least one point of failure in common. Uh, thanks? Tarvos flashes your phones up and a wink. This guy's great. People shit on Tarvos. I think he's kind of cool. Okay, cool may not be the word. <laughs> cool may not be the word. Interesting. Somewhat funny. He likes them. He likes them fairies, huh? He wheels closer to you, and one of his scattered cards crunches under a tread and gets stuck, necessitating a bit of finagling. You must admit, you're a little surprised by the wheelchair. Your experience as an alternative would suggest that their culture is not very kind to the disabled. Oh, it very isn't. There's a long story behind the fact of me being like this. Kanye says not to talk about it because it hurts my self-esteem. Oh, okay, that's fine. You can turn your attention to Ms. Carr. As far as we can teach you, <laughs> well, if you insist, I will reveal to you my tragic backstory. <laughs> like, well, if you say so, I didn't wait. <laughs> I used to be more of a hardcore gamer who would have who would do a, the extreme role plays, and I had a friend, or I thought she was my friend, who I did flarp with. Oh, you're familiar, flarp. You're a pester chum. Couldn't think of it, you've got a great flarp friend who we might love to meet. Well, I don't play anymore. Because this old friend of mine did a bad thing to me, resulting in a chain of revenge that was very tragical. Essentially, the story is that I was thrown off a cliff, physically, and became heavily injured, which resulted in my legs not working. Oh god, that sounds terrible. The culprit continues to hassle me sometimes in ways which are supposedly remorseful, but mostly continue to make me feel bad. For instance, trying to make me learn how to climb stairs, or fight better, or telling me I'm useless and awful because I can't. Although she also sent me this four-wheel device which helps me to not get cold, so that's nice, I guess. Uh, although maybe she wouldn't have done that if Connie didn't say to. I don't know, she's hard to understand. Sometimes very nice, and other times extremely not nice, and I can't figure out how she truly feels about me. Wow, this girl is talking about well, seems like a real piece of work. You're sure glad none of your friends or anything like that, har har. Yeah, but maybe it's best not to think about her actually. Kanye was right. Why don't I teach her how to play? Tavos! Tavos freezes up instinctively. Oh no! Oh no! She's here! The one who injured me! Oh no! Your spine ice is over. You recognize that's telltale exaggerated call, but how can this be? How can your dear, sweet, precious friend Vriska have done such a horrible thing to. Okay, yeah, no, this is such a trap. <laughs> Like, oh no, how could this have possibly happen? There's no way she actually... Yes, she totally would. Maybe she did do one thing wrong. <laughs> but why? This isn't like the other kids she killed. You know Riska is violent and volatile. She had to be to survive. But to harass her was after the fact, instead of just feeding him to her loose shoes, it doesn't make sense. You feel sick to your stomach. Why not just end his misery instead of leading him on like an asshole? Who knows? Hey, Tarvos, you haven't been answering my messages. We need to talk. Her voice comes from outside the window as it moves around the perimeter of the house. You glance at Tarvos' stricken face as you hear the sound of keys jingling in a lock. Fuck, she has the keys to his hive? Ain't no way, bro. That's gotta be bad news. That's trouble, trouble. You should have you should have gotten the keys when you... How the fuck does she have your keys, bro? That's like an ex-girlfriend that still has your credit card. Ain't no fucking way that that's a good idea. Ugh. Tarvos groans and leans back in his chair. Riska barges up into the recipe block and then freezes up. Oh, hey. Hey, you say with an awkward wave. Riska seems uncomfortable. I didn't know you knew this dork. It's a friendship in process. Tarvos has told you some things about their past together. Ugh, of course he has. 
Okay, listen. I know it sounds bad because it is, and I get that, okay? Way back when, it was less than a sleep ago, I was part of a flock, <laughs> I was part of a flock campaign that went off way off the rails, and Tarvos ended up getting thrown off a cliff. It was basically my fault. But that's all in the past now. Things are better now. I hooked Tarvos up with his sweet wheelchair and everything. It's not that sweet. Shut up, Tarvos. I'm talking about how terrible I feel about hurting you. Tarvos cringes, and you tried to intercede on his behalf. Why is Riska here? Oh, right. I'm here to extend an olive branch, very magnanimously so, if you ask me. Trezzy and I are getting back the band back together, not for Flarp, obviously, that ship has sailed, but we're going to whip this planet into shape and we all need the help we can get. We need all the help we can get. You've spent enough time moping around uselessly. It's time for some action. You're in, right? Uh, I... no? What do you mean, no? I mean, I don't really want to do anything exciting or dangerous like that. And especially because you're going to be involved, I don't think it would be good for me to be also be... Oh, come on. Things are totally square between us, Tarvos. We all got hurt. Besides, I'm just trying to help. You live in your potential. You live to help you live up to your potential. You could be somebody. You could finally start living up to your legacy. I don't want to be somebody. At least not your kind of somebody. Tough enough, Torreador. None of us get that choice. If nothing changes by the time your right to maturation roll around, you're screwed. The drones will call you in an instant. Riska turns to you, her eyes wide. Her fist trembling, her frustrated glare barely conceals the desperation beneath. I mean, you agree with me, right? She says, about to kill me. Tarvos needs to shape up. He needs us. It's time we put the past behind us and move on. I'm just trying to help him. She leans closer. It's obvious she wants you to back her up. Well, oh boy, a triple, tr a triple trouble, a triple threat. This will be interesting. <laughs>